Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Rosie Henshaw. If you're new here, then welcome. It's lovely to meet you. And if you're already existing, then hi guys, welcome back. So I've been caught in the rain, so I'm a little bit damp. So what I'm gonna do is I'll start again, I'm gonna start panelling on these walls. So this wall here had loads of wallpaper on it, and it's really rough, so I've just stripped all the walls, smoothed it all out, and I've bought these panelling sheets from Wix. So they're like a thin two-wheel um sheets these are already primed and it just saves you buying them individually and having to glue them all separate just buy them in the sheets a lot more easier i'm going to be doing other different type paneling like you know the um the old edwardian paneling in the hallway so we'll be doing that in a couple of weeks so i'm just going to get on and show you how i'm doing this so these are quite relatively easy they fit in so i haven't actually got to make any cuts for these i made sure i measured them and they were going to fit if anything i'm going to have to add um, molding and stuff to make it larger so all I'm going to do is I'm going to need a spirit level and um, some foam on owls. So I'm going to open that and get put that into my little gun. And it starts to come out. Now with the no more nails, you even on the right angle, so you can see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move you over a bit, and I'm going to put you on the dresser, <laughs> so you're going to be able to see everything that's kind of going on. I've got the table in the way. Oh. Let's have my phone out of its case. Woo. This is going to be a bit of a Calamity Jane video. It's not exactly going to be the most organised video in the world, but I'm going to attempt to show you what I can. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with one of the sheets. I'm going to have to clear this beading, so I've got some of this beading to finish the trim up to make it really nice for me. Um, some of them were as little as £1.90 for a strip. Um, in being here, so I've got two of each because it's quite a long wall. I'm just going to clear over the sides, make sure I've got a little workspace. I'm going to lay one of the boards down and um, lay the back facing upwards. I got these primed and um, because I just thought it would be a bit better to have these primed. I'm going to try and take this sticker off so that when I put the EDC in, it doesn't really make much difference. Um, and when you're caulking things, it's good to get all of the, um, not caulking, like no nailing stuff. It's good to sort of like go do like swirly patterns. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Making sure you get really close to the edges as well. Right, now we've got our no more nails on. I'm going to lift this up. And it's going to be quite malleable at first. And mine's going to be sitting on my skirting board. Little tip. Don't go right into the skirting board and um, too close into a corner because it can and then it's going to be fixed pretty much straight away. You're going to have to bang this out but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my spirit level, rest it on the top. Yeah, that's perfectly straight. So it's a little bit out from the wall and just with the, the, the underside of your hand just sort of like press this down so it gets Flat. Be careful not to break the spirit level. And press it nice and tight to the wall. If 
you can get a nail gun and um, put a few nails and tacks in, which I might do at a later stage. But I'm just going to go across now and do that. When I get to the cuts, I'm going to show you how I cut them. Hi guys, welcome back. So now I'm going to measure the plug out, and I think the best way to do that is to, if anyone wants to get in the video, I'm going to lean it up against the plug socket, push my board flush, what it will be, up to the wall piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark off roughly, and that's good because that will be within that line. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure the length of that. And then I'm just going to mark off the top bit. Okay. So whatever that is saying, the how high that is. And obviously it needs to go down to the skirting. That's roughly about that. I'm going to get my tape measure up. And I'm going to do that now. Hi guys, so once you've cut, like measured out your plug where it's going to be, you're going to need a multi-tool. So, and you're going to need to go down and cut along the edges. It's going to be too dangerous to try and hold my phone while I do that, so I'm just going to come off now and then I'll show you what's it's done. Hi guys, so it's now the next morning, it's Saturday morning and we're ready to go to the museum. But last night I really cracked down and got it done. Um, I didn't do a step by step by me gluing on, basically all of these panels were glued on the same as the very first one was. Um, some of them, when the wall is not completely flat, some of them you just have to tack a nail in. Not even completely all the way through, just to hold it on until the no nails is dry and then the next morning you can remove the nails, which I've done. Um, I'm sort of that person where I'm doing DIY, I can't really sort of just stop and keep filming, I just want to get it done with. So this is the cut that I've done around the plug, so I'm quite happy with it. So I cooked, um, put the no nails on, as I did on the very first board, and stuck it over the top, and the hole that was cut for the plug went around perfectly. You do get left with a tiny little gap, but that's absolutely fine, because you can use your caulking gun and just caulk all in there, or filler, or whatever you want to use, wood filler or caulk. But that's what I use, is caulk. Um, and then I had an, a, the exact same cut, there with another plug but other than that there weren't any other cuts i did have an end panel that needed to be cut because these panels are 45 centimeters um, and this panel um these are 60 centimeters but this needs to be 45 so i needed two strips took off so i just chopped sword down what i'd done with the thing just down the line of one of these and then i put a bit of my beading in the corner just because i feel like the beading makes it really nice and finishes it off um so then what I done then afterwards is where you can see all these paint lines. Oh, is that on? So what I done is I just got my cork gun. Oh, pulling things about now. Got my cork gun. This is no more nails, but the cork is in the same type bottle, so I wouldn't be using this, even though there's no more nails is paint bottle. You just pump it until it starts to feel pressurised like it's coming out. Take the lid off, and I just went down all of the lines just going like that and then what I've done is with a little pot of water because you're going to need to wipe the excess off into the pot of water and maybe like a wet rag um, I just used my finger and smoothed it all the way down wiped my finger at the same time while I've done it to get the excess off and it came out really smooth and um, later on that night once it completely dried I give it a quick light sand now I'm not having it this colour the colour that I've painted on it I've painted this in archive by Farron Wall um, it's just a tester pot that I've got um, I wish I had a white test spot really, but I haven't. Um, so what I've then done is I've just gone over, once I've sanded, I've gone over with the paint on anywhere that had the cork because if there are any imperfections that are there, it will show up once it's painted with a matte paint, it will show up the imperfections more than it does against the white background and obviously it being white cork. Um, so I've sanded it down, give it a paint and I've noticed in the middle section there's a few little knobbly pieces. There's a few little knobbly pieces that are going to need re-sanding and filling, which I will do. Um, but so far, this is how it's coming along. The panelling. <laughs> Betty tries to bite the hoover, but Gary's hoovering upstairs and I've nearly going, no, no. Um, so the next stage, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to make my own peg rail. So I've just bought these sheets of timber. Um, 
and I've got two of them because it's quite a long wall. And what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to drill some holes through them. And rather than buying pegs online or trying to make them myself from dowel rods, I think it'd be really complicated. I've got these pegs, um, and I got these off of an actual peg rail, I'll show you. I went to my bargains. They do sell these in BQ as well. Um, and they do these little like peg rails with these little pegs on. So they're four on a peg rail, so I bought four of these. They're £1.50. It will work out cheaper to do it like this than to buy the pegs online. They're like £5 for like two on some of the websites I was looking at. Um, so I'm going to be using these. And also, because I've kept this, this is ideal, I'm not going to have them as close spaced together, but I'll probably have them like that distance. So I can use these holes, put them onto the wood, and draw with a pencil so I can mark it off perfectly. And because this wood is a very similar depth to that, it will come out really good. So then I'm going to drill little holes where I've marked off and then re-screw these on. Therefore making a large one of them basically, a peg rail, to go across the top and then I'll be doing some moulding and some painting as well. Um, and I will show you them stages as I'm doing them. But I'm going to be off to the museum so when you see me back in two seconds, <laughs> I've been out all day and I'm doing this. And also I want to show you as well, the new mirror come. So this is more like a, oh, Hand over the camera. This is more like a dining room update rather than a paneling video because I'm not really teaching properly. Um, but I ordered a mirror off Wayfair to go above the radiator cover. It's a bit of a mess in here. I've got my tools in a bag. Um, so yeah, mirrors come from Wayfair. It was like really good value. These sort of like large mirrors are like £200 normally. I've got this for like £89 on the way there in the cell, so really happy with that. Um, I needed a mirror. And like I said, me and Gary, we have been saving up to get each of the rooms done a little bit nicer, because obviously we didn't have the money to do it, and we haven't really got the money to be paying a carpenter to do this type of thing, so it's all being done on a real, like on a budget and trying to do it as cheap as we can, because I want it, I can't really afford it. So yeah, hopefully you'll stick around and we're gonna carry on doing some other bits. I can't edit my videos, by the way, this might be a really random video, I can't edit my videos, but I do know how someone taught me to put all the videos together. So if it looks like they're just cutting sections, it's because I've just put all the videos that I filmed at different times together. So you probably have about 50 introductions as well. So I'm going to be back doing that in a second. Hi, yeah, so it's the morning after, didn't end up coming back to do anything yesterday. Um, but me and Gary last night, I've actually primed this now, we stuck up some batten wood so just some plain wood, that wood that I showed you, and we just stuck it to the wall and put a few nails in. I didn't actually screw holes for these, I just know nails these little pegs on. I thought that'd be kind of good leaving for the day. And now what we're just doing is we're just adding a little bit of trim. So what we will do is just put a little bit of no more nails on that, glue it, and then um, and then tack it with some nails, and then give it a paint. Um, I did go over any areas that I primed dark um, and I bought some paint from B&Q from the Valspar range and um, I had mixed up a fair and ball colour so the fair and ball colour is all white so once I've got that painted then I'll show you the after and then yeah getting, getting there finally getting there